Hey everybody, I'm Mac McConnell, uh, one of the co-founders of Monto, and wanted to make you a quick video to show you a bit about how to set up abandoned cart recovery for Webflow and a little bit about how it works. So before we get started, just wanted to say that this product is trying to address a huge problem in e-commerce that really affects every store online, and that's the abandoned cart problem. So what we saw was that on average, 75% of sales online are lost to this abandoned cart problem. This is when someone comes to your e-commerce store, begins a cart, and then leaves for whatever reason. And there could be a ton of reasons why this might happen. Maybe someone rings the doorbell right when they start the cart and they just kind of forget to come back. Or maybe they really even never intended on buying from you in the first place. But certainly some part of this 75% is going to be preventable. And this is these are people we can get to come back to the store if we message to them properly. So that's what this app tries to do in an easy, automated way. Um, we've seen this be a really powerful driver of revenue for a lot of our users, and I'm looking forward to see how it works for your shop. Please let me know with some feedback about how it's shaping up for you. My email is mac at monto.io, M-A-C-K at monto.io. I'd love to hear how it's working for you, um, good or bad. Please let me know. That being said, let's get started. Setting up only takes a couple minutes, so stick with me. Start by going to Monto.io. Once you're at Monto.io, click on Products, Abandoned Cart Recovery. That'll bring you to this page and Start Free Trial. And here on the Start Free Trial page, I'm just going to follow the directions. Put in my email, a password, password, sign up. Now, the next screen, I'm brought to Webflow, and I'm asked which store I want to connect. So I'm going to connect the shop that I have in Webflow, among my other projects. And I'm going to give it a name. Easy enough. If you're using FoxyCart, make sure you click this. The um, integration works a little differently for folks who are using Webflow plus Foxy, but if you don't, don't touch it. Okay, and here you are with the installation instructions. And installing Monto is super easy. Um, it just takes one script that you're gonna add to your project settings. So grab the script that we give you here, follow the directions here in the GIF, or just listen to what I'm doing. Um, you're gonna go to your project settings, which if you're in the designer, just means you're gonna click up in the upper left-hand corner on the Webflow logo. Project settings brings you here, go to custom code, and then here in your head code, drop the script that we gave you, see I already added mine, but you're gonna drop it here to the bottom of the head code. Easy enough, save and publish. Now once you've done that, go ahead and finish. Now that you have installed the abandoned cart script in your project settings within Webflow, and deployed to your production domain. You've installed everything, you're all set up, and now I'll show you what's next. So there are three pages to know about when you're in the app itself. Once you're logged into Monto, abandoned carts, the pages are carts, stages, and configure. And I'm gonna start by showing you what the carts pages does. So this is a real-time view, um, updated live, of all of the users on your page who create carts and shows you any updates to those carts. Um, so I'll show you what I mean by that by pretending like I'm a shopper on this page. What I'll do is I'll just add something to my cart. And all I've done here is I've added a $49 item to my cart. And here in a second, what you're going to see is that you're going to, is that it's going to populate in real time. There it is right there. That there's a shopper on your site who just added a $49 item to their cart. Now, if you click into it, we don't know anything about this user yet, so it's not terribly interesting quite yet. Although it's a little interesting to see what people are adding to their carts. But as the user continues shopping, for example, they're gonna add their email at some point, they're gonna add other information, like shipping address, billing address, things like that. This will get updated, like you just saw it right there. This email that I had just entered as a shopper came over here. Um, and now we start to get a more complete picture of this particular shopper. And this happens in parallel with all the shoppers who are on your site at once. So if you're a shop that has a lot of volume, this is really fun to look at because it's always updating. 
you can also filter all of these carts based on all of these different statuses. And if you want an explanation of what those are, you can look here by hovering over the status icon. Okay, moving on to configure. Okay, so here in the configure page, um, not a whole lot to cover here, but reply to email address. This is the email that if a user receives an abandoned cart email from your shop, and they hit reply, this is the email address it's going to go to. So maybe you want to have team at yourcompany.com or support at yourcompany.com. This is a good way to engage your customers in a conversation. A lot of times we'll see shoppers reply to these emails with feedback or a question or something like that. And these are good folks to listen to because they're highly engaged and they showed intention to purchase. So um, updating this will be important. Another feature that we're really excited about is augmented email capture. So what this does is exactly what it says. It turbocharges your recoverable carts. So of all the shoppers that come to your site, we're not able to get email addresses or information on all of them. However, we do have a pretty high rate of the number of those carts we're able to contact on your behalf. But if you add augmented email capture, what it does is it takes the email field from the checkout page and moves it up a little higher in the flow into the cart itself. So it allows the user to enter their email earlier, which increases the likelihood that we'll get some information about that shopper and then we can follow up with them for you. So this is a feature that we really recommend that you turn on by doing this. And including links directly in your product pages in recovering e emails. In the email that we ultimately send your shoppers who have abandoned, there'll be a picture and then the name of the product that was in their cart. And then that will happen for all the items in their cart. And this option uh, allows you to turn those titles into links. So a user can click on the link and then go to the page. We recommend you turn this on too, but only if you stick with the default URL scheme will we be able to do this for you. So if you have domain.com slash product, uh, name of product, if you're using the typical products layout that Webflow provides, this will work for you. So no problem. Unless you've done something really kind of tricky, this will work for your shop. Uh, so leave it enabled if so. Um, anything you add here, hit save. Okay, moving on to stages. Stages is the page where you'll spend most of your time customizing the experience for your shoppers. This is the email sequence that's going to go to everybody who abandons the cart. So this is really the entire story that you'll be telling the user. And this is really where you want to put a lot of your company's voice and personality and a little bit of strategic thinking into this sequence because it really will have a big impact on how abandoned cart works for your shop. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing you'll see when you open up one of the stages is uh, a delay. So this is the number of minutes that pass after a user abandons their cart before this email is sent. So I'll just click out of this really quickly to show you the sequence that we recommend. And when you install the app, this is the default that we give you, assuming that you enable it in the installation page. So the default that we like to give our users, because we have so much data that supports this, is that the first stage goes out in 30 minutes, the second stage goes out in 90 minutes, and the third stage goes out in 1440, and this is uh, 24 hours. Our data suggests that as long as you hit them with the first stage less than an hour, ideally 30 minutes, 30 minutes really seems to be the sweet spot, um, there's a high likelihood that they're going to open it and come back to the shop. Um, after 1440, however, it's very unlikely that they'll come back again. So they've really abandoned if they don't respond to this third email. So that being said, we've tried to design uh, a default sequence that really encapsulates all the data and all the learnings that we've had since we've been using the app across users and giving that to you. But that being said, you can customize all of this. You can turn off stage two, uh, you can turn off stage three, turn on stage two, you know, the choice is yours. So. Once you open a given stage, aside from delay, you have a name, which is something that just stays local and that's something that's not visible to the customer, which we say here. And subject line. Subject line is an important one because this is the thing that will most likely drive email open. So as you know, subject lines in marketing are so essential because when you see a line, when you see a new email in, come in your inbox, you're usually only looking at the subject line when you decide whether you want to open it. So try to put something thought provoking here, like, hey, I think you forgot something. That's a good one. And then you start to customize the email. Here the headline you see is here, and you can say, 
Hey there. Forget something? Or anything like that. Like I said, this is a good time for you to practice extending your brand voice and your brand personality to your customers um, through different text throughout the emails your abandoners receive. And once you click off the text box, you can see everything updating here. So you can see exactly how that looks to your users. Um, signature copy, this will be a place where you can say, cheers, Mac. And you can add information like that. This is also supporting Markdown. So if you want to support Markdown and if you understand how that works, you can add certain information, whoops, to create a little bit of styling um, around your text. Down here, you can customize the button text on your currently says go to cart, but you can change the language. You can uh, say, get it. Anything you want, whatever you think is going to help extend your brand's voice to your customers. Um, this is a place where you can change the hex code color for your background and your colors and your fonts and, and all that kind of stuff, just to make this look like a brand experience. Send a test email to yourself um, just to make sure it looks the way you want it to look. And then do the same across all of your stages. You know, again, we recommend three stages. Delays at 30, 90, 14, 40 minutes seems to be really the sweet spot of what we've noticed works really well for our users. But obviously, you know, this is an experiment and all stores work a little differently. So feel free to try different things out. But this is stages. And like I said, it's customizing the email sequence that goes to all your users who abandon. So it's important that you put some attention into this and really make it right for your shop. And the last screen I'll show you is setup. So easy enough. This is the script and installation instructions. If you ever, for whatever reason, delete this script on accident, you will have to reinstall it and then redeploy. And we give you directions of how to do that here. But this is just something you already did in the installation process. Um, so most likely you won't have to worry about this. But So that's abandoned carts. And um, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us. The app is always changing. We're always putting new features in, into it and making small little visual tweaks and things like that. And the goal of the app is to make you more money. You know, the goal of the app is to engage with your users who showed intention that they wanted to buy from you. And so to that mission, if there's something we can do better, there's something we're not really nailing, it's really important that we hear about it because, you know, we're really engaged with our users, want to hear what you guys are thinking. So again, my name's Mac. I'm one of the co-founders of the company. Reach out to me uh, if you have any feedback, good, bad, whatever. My email is Mac, M-A-C-K at monto, M-O-N-T-O dot I-O. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for installing our app. It means so much to us. We worked really, really hard on this and we're excited to bring it to Webflow Shops. So I'm standing by if I can help you with anything. Thanks a lot.